Hi everyone, it's Han here again. Welcome to Data Leveling. In today's video, we are going to learn how to use ByteDance SDXL Lightning on Confi UI, which in my opinion is one of the biggest step forward in stable diffusion and who knows, it might even change the whole scene. I have finished reading their paper and to summarize it in a short way without getting into the technical details, SDXL Lightning is a few-step text-to-image generative models using their own way of progressive adversarial diffusion distillation method. This method is also used in the SDXL Turbo. The main difference is that the SDXL Turbo uses the encoder Dino V2 as the discriminator backbone and it is working on pixel space as compared to Lightning which uses the SDXL own unit model which is running on latent space. And since it is running on latent space, the memory consumption and time required to perform the training is lesser and therefore they are able to perform the training on 1024 by 1024 pixels as compared to Turbo which is only 512 by 512. It is also compatible with ControlNet and also able to use as LoRas on other checkpoint models to reduce the steps required in the diffusion process while maintaining an acceptable final output. So for the models, we can install it directly from the ByteDance Hugging Face repository. There are the 1, 2, 4 and 8 step base models that we can install and for LoRas, we have 2, 4 and 8 steps. For us using Confi UI, we do not need to install the UNET models as our friends at ByteDance already compile it for us nicely into a checkpoint model. Once you have installed the checkpoint models and the LoRas, the checkpoint models go into the checkpoint folder and the LoRas go into the LoRa folder. According to ByteDance themselves, they also mentioned that the one-step model is experimental and the quality is more unstable, therefore I will not be testing the one-step model. Before we start, I have to mention that my PC is running on a 4090 GPU with 24 GB VRAM and a 32 GB DDR5 RAM. So the speed that I'll show later in the video might not be exactly the same as yours, but you can just downscale it accordingly based on your base result. Let's try out their base models. We will perform comparisons where we use the base model output as the origin and then compare the lightning output with it. Let's do a speed test first, we will start with the base model. Let's do a normal configuration here, 20 steps, CFG5. As you can see, on average it took around 4 seconds to generate. Now let's test the 2 step base model. We change the model to the 2 step version, then change the steps to be 2 and CFG to be 1. The average time taken is around 0.6 seconds. That is some crazy speed we have there. Next, we test with the 4 step model. Okay, 0.9 seconds, still very fast. Lastly, we test with the 8 step model. It took around 1.3 seconds per image and that is still very fast. Now let's have a look at the quality. I will show the prompts together with the results. These are all generated on the same seed and not cherry picked. For a lion, drawing of a dragon, anime Tokyo, stick in barbecue sauce, full body shot of a man in a museum. From the results, I think I can confidently say that the 4-step and 8-step models are acceptable in at least being able to generate something that is usable. As for the 2-step model, it might work for some but I think it belongs to the unstable zone together with the 1-step model. So moving forward, we will be testing the LoRas. For this example, we will use the Juggernaut V9 checkpoint model. Let's use the prompts and configurations from their CVID AI example. Okay, it took around 7 seconds to generate one image. Let's add the LoRa, search for LoRa and select LoRa Loader Model only. For the configurations, let's use the one recommended from ByteDance checkpoint model. Okay, the two-step model, hmm, fast but questionable quality. Let's try increasing the CFG to 2.0 to see if the colors are able to shine more. Okay, never mind. Let's move on to the four-step LoRa. Okay, the quality is acceptable, much better than the 2-step model. Time taken, about 0.9 seconds. Now let's try the 8-step LoRa. Time taken is around 1.1 seconds. This quality is very good. If we set the CFG to 2.0, the results are very comparable to the original Juggernaut V9 checkpoint model. Lastly, let's try the Juggernaut V9 Lightning Checkpoint model. This model is fused with the 4-step LoRa by design and let's use their recommended configurations here. It took around 2 seconds and I must say the quality is very close to the original checkpoint. 
let's take a look at some other examples. Here is a prompt of cinematic photo of a monkey, masterpiece. Shrek in snow holding up a sign saying subscribe. In terms of words, all the models are still not able to get it right. But still, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's try out with ControlNet and see if it works as expected. I'll be using the Zoe Dep Anything ControlNet. Okay, with ControlNet, the base model took around 7 to 8 seconds. We will ignore the details like faces for now as we are mainly testing to see if the control net is able to perform its function with the lightning model. So in our case, it will be to follow the depth of the image as shown. The two-step model took around 0.7 seconds and we can see that the depth control net is working well. The four-step model also works well, took about one second to do that. For the eight-step LoRa, we are getting around 1.4 seconds. Okay, we have also confirmed their claims of working with ControlNet is true as all of the images generated are following the depth of our base image. For the lightning version, we are getting about 2 seconds. Let's also test with the IP adapter. I will be using back the same workflow that I used in my Comfy UI IP adapter video. This is to make sure that if let's say you already have an existing workflow, we can do a direct replacement of the model. So we'll be running the same configurations as before and we'll be using this phase for the IP adapter. Okay, the base checkpoint took around 11 seconds per image. It seems like the 2-step LoRa does not work with the IP adapter. Now let's try out the 4-step LoRa. This one might be a little bit subjective. I would say it's good enough. Considering the time taken was only 1 second. Let's try out the 8-step LoRa. For the 8 step LoRa, we are getting around 1.6 seconds. Results wise, I would say the 4 step, 8 step, and lightning version are all able to achieve a certain degree of lightliness to the reference phase. The lightning model surprisingly is taking around 2 times the amount of time required as compared to the 8 step LoRa. For the lightning version, we are getting around 3 seconds. The last experiment will be with in painting. I will be using back the same workflow that I used for my Comfy UI in painting video. Let's change the outfit of our Mr. Bean X Wolverine. Let's say we want to do something like X-Men Wolverine costume. Okay, the base checkpoint took about 10 seconds. Now we add the LoRa model to the focus patch. Alright, that is a little bit too far off for the 2-step model. Now let's take a look at the 4-step LoRa. It took around 1.8 seconds. I think some of these are still okay because in different X-Men movies he actually wore different outfit. So like a black singlet with muscles should be passable as Wolverine costume. Now let's go for the 8 step Laura. I also realized that for this workflow of mine, if let's say we are using the lightning version or Laura's for the in painting, we have to increase the CFG value to 2 or higher. Otherwise it will always show like a dull color. Colors like dark grey, dark yellow. Okay, the time taken for the 8 step LoRa is around 2.3 seconds. Let's try the lightning version. The time taken is around 3.2 seconds. Okay, let's take a look at our results here. We can see that the average time taken increases as the number of steps increases, which is expected. And if we look at the percentage change with respect to the base model, we are looking at about 70 to 80% increase in speed. But of course, not all models here can be used to generate a desired output. So those highlighted in green are those that are able to deliver an acceptable result based on the use case. And those in yellow, I would say, is more of a hit or miss kind of situation. Personally, I will go for the 8-step LoRa or the V9 Lightning model as they both are able to generate at a very high speed while still maintaining a quality that is comparable to the Juggernaut V9 checkpoint model. Now, if let's say in your line of work, you have to be very particular towards quality. Then what you can do is prototype with the 8-step LoRa or the V9 Lightning model first. And if you already get a desired result while generating the images, you just save yourself a lot of time. And if both models doesn't work, you can always go back to the checkpoint model. If we look at this at scale at 1000 image, we are looking at about 6 seconds faster per image. It equates to around 1 hour and 40 minutes faster per 1000 image. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if you'll be performing the switch towards SDXL Lightning. 
If you learned something from this video, do help to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. It will really help the channel grow and serves as motivation for me as well. If you face any difficulties following the videos, do also leave a comment and I will try my best to help you. And remember, don't stop leveling up.